Hey guys, welcome to a uh, another vlog of mine, and today I want to talk about my uh, PC that I am currently running, that I record all of my games on, as well as play all of my games. As stated before, my processor is an FX6300. Yes, there is a step higher than this, the FX6350, that I could have gotten, but that's a extra $50. I paid 99 bucks for my 6300 and I was able to, able to overclock it to 4.1 gigahertz, just a hair over the base clock of the 6350. So uh, th there's no real point of getting the 6350, uh, to be honest. Um, even on a cheap motherboard, I see no reason on getting the 6350. Save the 50 bucks and spend it on something else uh, hard drives whatever you need my gpu or graphics card is a gigabyte winforce r9 270 uh for what i need it can play pretty much any last generation so that's xbox 360 or ps3 game at 1080p 60 frames a second and current generation games 1080p 30 frames a second for the motherboard i have the asus m5 a97 which is a lower end uh motherboard but it's a full atx board which i appreciate i originally had my first motherboard was a lower end gigabyte m atx board and this asus for about the same price we're talking less than five dollars is quite nice considering it's fully uh full atx uh the overclocking on this even though the uh, even though the amazon description says it's not that good i found it's quite good i have a 17 percent overclock on it and it's quite stable and in all honesty i can probably push it farther than the 4.1 gigahertz that i currently have on my fx 6300. as for the case i have the thermal take commander g41 in the black color scheme that has the side window yeah, I, I like it. It's 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 pretty nice. Uh, with the side window, I'm able to look into, um, of course, all of the components of my PC, my video card, power supply, mobo, uh, radiator, full bed. And uh, no, I, I like it. Uh, I went from a very small mid tower to, let's face it, the uh, this case is a rather large or mid sized mid tower case and i can tell you right now the airflow at least is a lot better the uh, ease of use is better to when adding new components i personally like this case and uh, i recommend it at least uh, from my limited experience with cases for chassis fans i stripped all of the included fans and went with the corsair air series af 120s with white LEDs for my CPU cooler instead of a traditional heat sink I decided to go with a with an all-in-one or AIO water cooler I decided to go with the Corsair Hydro series H55 uh, I've been very impressed with this cooler as it has not leaked on me once it's easy to clean and keep dust out of Granted, I have replaced the fans, which I will get to in a moment, but um, it, this for only at the time of purchase, it, it was only maybe 50 or $55. This cooler, this AIO cooler was, it is still extremely good value. As I said, um, I decided to upgrade the the standard fans that came with the AIO Kohler to the Corsair series SP120s. The SP stands for static pressure, and I can tell you right now that the increased static pressure over the original fans, as well as the fans that I upgraded to before I did the SP120s, 
and it's quite good. Um, I'm even though I'm using a single 120 millimeter uh, radiator, I'm still using a push pull config, and I can tell you right now that uh, even under the most intense situations. Even in this hot room that I currently am in, uh, my CPU does not exceed 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which is extremely good, um, considering that my room is essentially an oven. And I, I do like the fact that there are plastic rings that you can change out. Uh, currently, I have the white rings in. They ship with the red already pre-installed. But uh, I changed, as I said, to the white. I, I might change to the blue, considering that my motherboard is like a black, gray, and blue scheme going on with some like eh, white incense here, uh, accents here and there. But um, I don't know. Yeah, that's niffy for me. In my system, I have six drives. Uh, that's the maximum amount my case and my motherboard were handled. Um, I don't really want to mount any SSDs in the back panel, like right behind the motherboard. And my motherboard can only handle six at the moment. So I currently have three SSDs and three traditional hard drives. Uh, my first SSD I'm going to uh, tackle is the Kingston Digital 128 gigabyte. B300, that's my OS drive that's solely responsible for my operating system as well as key apps such as Steam, Windows, VLC, apps that I use every day but do not take up a lot of room. Hence the 120 gigabyte storage capacity that I chose for this SSD. For gaming, I have two PNY 240 gig C7 1111 uh, SSDs that I currently have in RAID 0. This is for better performance. If you don't know RAID, please look this up. It's very simple to, to distinguish between RAID 0, RAID 0 and RAID 1. I do not have in RAID 1 because that's kind of silly for games considering that I can re-download all the games off of Steam as well as game data and yeah, there's just no point. I, I rather have speed over redundancy. That's why I have RAID 0 and I can tell you right now these uh, just having 240 gigabytes and RAID 0 is more than enough for the games that I use on a regular basis. And last but not least, I want to talk about mass storage. Uh, I currently have two Western Digital Blues and one Western Digital Green one terabyte hard drive. All these hard drives are one gigabyte. The Western Digital Green is used for my movies. And the reason which is I don't want to hear much when I am listening to my, my movies, whether it be over my soundbar or my headphones. So the, the WD Greens are more power efficient and qu quieter as well as they don't produce as much heat. In turn, better for my movies. The I use one WD Blue for my storage. So all of my wallpapers, music, um, on its videos, that sort of thing I use for that WD Blue. The other WD Blue I use for video game rendering, rendering and video game recording. So every video that you see on uh, my channel has been stored, will be stored, or is currently stored on my on that WD Blue. Uh, I can tell you right now that my WDs are, uh, they've done me to be very well um, they've been very quiet their performance is extremely well temperatures are very good uh, overall extremely good product for my power supply I have the FOPI Java 650 watt ATX power supply ultra silent high performance that's the whole title um, 
this was on the, the cheap, which I know it, it's a sin. And after looking back at building the system, I wish I would have bought an, a, sim, uh, a a better power supply. Uh, however, it is 650 watt, which is more than enough for what I need. I can probably plop in another graphics card. I have still have plenty of over room in terms of wattage for my cpu to overclock uh, but uh, i i truly wish i would have gotten a better power supply simply the fact that i wouldn't have to worry about it just blowing up on on me at any time for ram i have kingston hyperx fury i have four six four gigabyte uh ram coming at coming in at 16 gigabytes of total RAM however I'm running at 1333 megahertz which is rather slow um, when I first built my PC on the on my original mother supply which was a gigabyte the maximum uh, rate that the memory could operate at was 1333 and I transferred that rate over to my mo new motherboard when I rebuilt the system which, oddly enough, the 1333 was actually at the lowest end of the motherboards accepted the minute, the limit at what they at what it would accept. Um, to be honest, I wish I would have gotten faster RAM and this motherboard that I'm currently running. To be honest, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, I'm just happy that I have 16 gigabytes. It, it does make rendering video as well as playing. Uh, games much better as well uh, while I'm having stuff open in the background uh, I rather have the slower mem memory if it means I have more of it rather than having faster memory if it means I only have le it like half of it I'd rather have the 16 gigabytes at 1333 over 8 gigabytes at like 2000 megahertz one of the more odd things that I have in my system is the Corsair memory airflow fan. Um, originally when I had my first case it was rather tiny and airflow was an issue in my system so I bought this to circulate the air so it can get into those hard to reach areas that the case fans just couldn't really get to. Now I have it so that it could generate heat north of the power uh, GPU so basically uh, the VRMs out of the passively cold heat sinks that are above the GPU I get at with this RAM cooler um, granted its original task and main task is to cool the RAM but with my HyperX it really doesn't need cooling um, it, I use this basically to cool all of the um, non-essentials, all the stuff that not I change that all the stuff that doesn't have heat sinks or does have heat sinks, but doesn't have ready access to a system fan or is close to a system fan. Um, even to my radiator, radiator fans that are sucking air out of the system or next to one of the intake fans or outtake fans or exhaust fans. Uh, basically anything that is in a dead spot or lack of airflow area, this is what the air cooler is for. The other things that I want to talk about are the cards that I have in my expansion slots. Uh, the first is my Asus. Sound card, which you can see on my on the screen right now, uh, on board as you can see is also an amp, which I like, considering I am running headphones as well as a sound bar. The onboard solution for my motherboard was just not powerful enough to run both. You could run the headphones perfectly fine, but uh, the sound bar, it, it was, it just didn't have enough oomph. Considering I had a one to two splitter, so I would plug it into the head, the one to two splitter into the headphone jack on the back and run cables both to my headphone jack and extension cable to my headphone jack. And my sound bar would plug directly into, it just didn't have enough oomph. 
but uh, getting this sound card with an amp, but it finally had enough oomph to broadcast both to the headphones and to the sound bar with enough volume that I could comfortably listen to it with the sound bar at half max volume and the headphones at three quarters, not, not even that, uh, maybe half as well max volume. And uh, yeah, you, that this card, even though even though it says 3265 on the screen currently, I bought a refurbished model for less than 20 bucks. And I can tell you right now, this this card is pretty damn good. I would even recommend it for the listed price here on Amazon. Um, even though it's an only in a PCI card, not a PCIe. Even though it's quite quite lengthy, I would recommend it. It does a great job. Plus, uh, the software that comes along with it has a lot of audio presets that really do help. Now, considering I like a lot of low end when I'm listening to uh, things on my headphones, I adjust it to that. And uh, when I'm listening to my soundbar, I have a lot of low end programmed in my soundbar, but I really don't want to change anything on my soundbar programming. So I go into the uh, little program that is that comes with the sound card, and I'm actually able to adjust the uh, quality so that it's more treble based, so it evens out a little bit, but still has a lot of bass, a lot of low end to it as well. The last expansion card I want to talk about is the Gigabyte GCWB8670i Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth adapter. This is a PCIe card. Uh, this is one of the uh, small ones, the one lane cards, and uh, I can tell you right now that it is quite nice. I have used, uh, I originally in, uh, installed this card so that I could uh, use it wherever I uh, use my PC wherever I am. I don't have to be within reach of my 25 foot Ethernet cable. I could be within reach of wireless access, Wi Fi access. And I can tell you right now, this, this little card is, is pretty damn nice. Uh, you get the same bandwidth as you would over a traditional uh, PCIe card that you would find in the laptop, which is totally kick ass. Uh, in addition to that, you get total Bluetooth, which is stellar. Um, I've used it everywhere, and I can tell you right now, the only limitation that I've seen with this card is with the receiving device. So that would be with any Bluetooth speaker. I've only used it with Bluetooth speakers. So whatever their limitation is, that's the limitation on the card. But I, I've seen this card work flawlessly. Yeah.